Welcome to the Reptile Creature Series. I've broken this one up into two parts, high-res asset creation and game-res asset production. But I will say that if you get both parts together, there will be an extra 90 minutes of instructional video, which I'll go over in detail at the end of this intro. Part one is for those of you interested in only the high-res creature creation. Now, you may recognize the subject as the Reptile Creature Bust from the Intro to ZBrush Part 2 and 3 series. And while those sections did contain a few sped up commentary overviews on the making of the bust in the bonus section, they didn't really go in depth on the actual creation of the mesh, which is what this series is all about. Part 1 for this series has 69 videos and more than 8 hours dedicated to the creation of the high res reptile creature asset. Now, don't think that this is 8 hours of me using the clay brush. As always, every section will contain multiple approaches to tackling a task, not necessarily just the one I used for the original creation. And since I like my instruction to be chock full of useful information for you in your own projects, I'll not only explore the creation process from a design standpoint, but we'll also be delving deep into technique as well. This will ensure that when you're done with these videos, you'll have, at the very least, the know-how to accomplish your own unique projects with your new problem-solving skills learned in these videos. Each section will contain an overview video with commentary, so you can get an idea of the scope of this section, followed by a real-time breakdown of each technique utilized in the overview video. We'll start rolling with Dynamesh and the basic brushes we'll be using to start sketching in 3D. As we progress through our block out, we'll be covering design, proportion, anatomy, silhouette, texture, all of things essential to the creation of our character, besides just the technical know-how to get the job done. From the simple bust block out, we'll move on to body creation, covering a number of techniques. And before we get too far, I'll go over a few proportional techniques to make sure our initial landmarks are correct. This will include bringing in the skeleton found in the ZBrush lightbox, making a head unit plane to check your proportions, as well as utilizing the transposed line preferences to mark head units for easy proportion checking. We'll also do a section on evaluating silhouette in ZBrush, and utilizing basic material and light setups to check your work as you go. We'll first discuss breaking pieces off and refining them individually, using insert brushes and topology brushes to create quick teeth, eyes, horns, mouth flaps, tongues, etc. And at this point, you'll have the basic idea of your character down split into parts that make it easier to work on while ensuring that the pieces still work together as a whole. From here, we'll start moving on to secondary detail. We're not at the poor detail stage yet, but we're continuing to build up resolution as we go, getting into bigger wrinkles, indications of different skin textures, and answering subtool integration questions. And since this creature has large secondary details like scales, we'll be talking about how to create a custom multi-insert brush to add the right detail in the right spots brush settings to ensure that while you're applying them to the object they conform to the underlying structure, as well as other simple techniques and settings that will make moving and changing multiple objects easy. This section is another example of using multiple techniques to arrive at similar results. In addition to insert brush solutions, we'll cover nano mesh techniques that you might find more useful for your own creations or projects that you attempt down the line. Once all of our secondary shapes are in, it's time to start detailing. We'll go over retopologizing and projection techniques to create meshes that detail and smooth more predictably. We'll also talk about skin direction and different techniques to achieve the surface look you're going for, using alphas for detail, as well as creating your own alphas from scratch right within ZBrush. We'll cover surface noise, curve brushes, and finally you'll get the poly painting. And we're going to go over the basics all the way through brush modes, masking, building up layers of color all working together to achieve a complex but still readable base color for your creature. We'll also talk about materials, lighting, spotlight texturing, and even post effect filters to help you achieve exactly the look you want for your final poly paint render. Part 2 is all about translating your source high risk creation into a real time asset for use in your favorite game engine or renderer. This section contains almost 90 videos, adding another full 8 hours of instruction. We're going to start with a number of options for retopologizing, first starting right in ZBrush with ZSphere Retopology, ZRemesh, and actually using a combination of both of those to arrive as fast as we can at a viable, final GameRest topology. From there we're going to head into Maya, talk about different methods and tools for either cleaning up the mesh you've created in ZBrush by appending and refining your imported ZBrush mesh, or if you'd rather just create the game res from scratch within Maya, we'll be going over both vanilla Maya modeling tools, as well as the newest retopology tools found within the 2016 modeling toolkit. After we've explored these new options, we'll talk about refining and redirecting edge flow on your mesh to create optimal topology for animation. After all this, you should have an excellent game res all set up, ready for the next step, which will be UVs. Much like with the topology section, we're going to go over a number of options for you to achieve the best end results as fast as possible. You can feel free to use one, a few, or all of them to arrive at your end goal. We'll start off in Hedis UV Layout and go over basic UV functionality while we unfold all of our meshes in real time. 
If you want to do your entire UV layout and tweaking in Hedis, you're free to do so. Uh, but we're also going to head into Maya for UV tweaking and layout as well. And while we're in Maya, we'll cover how to UV your entire mesh much in the same way as Hedis using just the Maya UV tools. And of course, if you want to do your UVing in ZBrush, we'll have you covered there as well. We'll go over how to get the most out of UV Master for all your meshes, all from within ZBrush. And as always, after learning the different techniques, you'll be able to use one, two, or all the methods, either separately depending on the situation, or all together in conjunction with each other to maximize the strengths of each. When we move into baking, we'll go over even more options. We'll talk about how to bake all of your meshes together, all at once, right out of ZBrush using the FBX exporter, in conjunction with the Substance Painter baking options. We'll also delve deep into other options to get the maps you need. We'll bake our maps in X-Normal, being sure to talk about the options you'll need to get a nice clean result. If you want to do all your baking in ZBrush, we're going to go over the steps required there to bake your high-res detail onto a low-res mesh using the multi-mesh exporter. We'll discuss how to bake maps in Maya if you're so inclined, as well as using Substance Designer to create ancillary maps for use in your favorite texture program. Finally, we'll head into Nald and get some really, really quick maps out of there. Then using everything we've created so far, we'll jump into Substance Painter and get this creature textured up. We'll discuss the maps we've created and how they'll be used in the program, and move right into getting comfortable with both Painter fundamentals, as well as a physically based rendering system, so we're familiar with the rules of the system and how to best utilize them for the look we're going for. While we're texturing, we'll be touching on a ton of topics found within Painter. Mass generators, procedural textures, importing custom alphas, projection painting, quick masking, triplanar projection, texturing with particles, and a lot more. We'll also go into custom channels to make sure you utilize ambient occlusion, subsurface scattering, and emissive to achieve the effects you need to make your creations pop. So we're nearing the end of the process now. From here on out, it's about getting your textures exported to the specifications of your renderer, and we'll be utilizing, of course, the native viewport renderer in Painter, as well as the new iRay renderer, conveniently integrated right into Painter. From here, we'll take our mesh and exported maps and hop over into Marmoset, where we'll discuss real-time rendering material settings and options. Finally, we'll go into the super powerful Otoy Octane Renderer, where we'll discuss material basics, getting your mesh, material, camera, imager, and textures all set up correctly, create a render target, and discuss all of the powerful features built right into Octane, such as the render layers, render passes, info channel, and more. We'll go over a few different ways to light your objects, including HDR images, sun and sky, and how to use both of those together to get the look you want. Now for the bonus section. So as I said before, both sections will be for sale as a standalone product. If you're only interested in the high-res asset creation, part one is for you. If you only want real-time solutions for your high-res source material, part two is the one you want. However, if you want them both bundled together, there's going to be a bonus section for you. This will be an extra hour and a half of content, which will go over in detail the creation of the reptile column prop seen here. We'll start with a few different posing options within ZBrush, such as Transpose Master for posing multiple subtools at a time, as well as an option for creating a single mesh with subdivision history for easy transpose and masking to get it into the position that you want. After that, we'll go into how the environment prop of the Nameless City Rune column was created from scratch, step by step, in real time. We'll discuss Z Modeler, Radial Symmetry, importing and utilizing custom alphas, array mess functionality, and a few techniques to add some serious wear. Finally, Louise Cruel is going to go over the 3D printing process for this object, from exporting the mesh out of ZBrush, using Autodesk's free program Mesh Mixer to clean up and add proper supports for the printing process, and finally going to MakerBot's free software to allow you not only to preview the print, but also find out how long it'll take the print, depending on the settings you choose, and even how much filament you're going to end up using. From here, you can send it to your own printer, or export everything to a file to hand off to someone else to use with their printer, with all the files, support, settings, and options that you want. And last but not least, we're also going to talk about ZBrush render passes that we did for the marketing shot, as well as compositing all of that stuff in Photoshop. So, there is a lot of content here. 180 videos, almost 18 hours of instruction, and of course I tried wherever possible to give you as many different options as I could to make sure you're able to choose the tools and software that make the most sense for you, depending on your project or the process that you're working on.